in the name of Yeshua Ha Moshia. Once again, Shalom Rastafari. Yes, my brothers and sisters. Now, in continuance, and we want to touch on this because I think we have a little bit of time in, in this recording uh, sequence to at least touch on another important aspect of Rastafari and of this, this this present revelation in the world. Now we as Rastafari know that there's many who see his Imperial Majesty differently and through and from a different perspective than I and I do. Some of them are even Ethiopians or call themselves Ethiopians. Now, we would say careless Ethiopians. We can invoke uh, Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 12, which says, Ye Ethiopians also shall be slain by my sword. And we know spiritually in the fullness, the fulfillment, that the sword of yod Hey wow Hey of Yahweh, is the word. And the word is the B-I-B-L-E, the Metaf Kedus, uh, the Book of the Seven Seals, or otherwise known as the Bible. Now, His Majesty teaches us that for my part, I glory in the Bible. And this is true. Yet we have to study. I and I must study and show ourselves approved. This is, this is the cornerstone. This is, this is the missing key. You understand? Know this is this is the missing key or the or, or the, the, the 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 cornerstone. This is the cornerstone for this is the cornerstone that we as Rastafari collectively and many of us individually have neglected. We could speak about the Ethiopian World Federation, which is a cornerstone of self-governance for us as Rastafari. We could speak about Shashimene, which has gone through so much over the past 40 or so years until much of what our ancestors had has been lost. But this should not discourage us. So there's a lot of naysayers even amongst our own people who bring false witness amongst the tribes here in the wilderness of North America. But the key is that spiritual power. The, the, the key is, is, is the Bible, is the B-I-B-L-E. And the, and the cornerstone key is the coronation of His Imperial Majesty. And this particular day, this particular memorial, November 2nd, this is the 81st, is an important time to I and I. As we've been announcing and, and we've mentioned it before, we just love this cover right here. You understand? Where it has the Imperial Majesty in the very heart and center, you understand, of this so-called Jesus controversy. But as Imperial Majesty fulfills it, you understand, because Revelation reveals the truth. Revelation reveals that I shall have a new name. You understand? And his imperial majesty has come in that new name bearing witness to the law of God or the commandment, keeping the commandment, as well as the testimony of the true 
Jesus Christ, the Jesus Christ of the Bible, the, the Jesus Christ, you know, saying, of Revelation. And this is this book right here, the Gospel of His Imperial Majesty, the Gospel of Hannah Selassie. We give thanks to the Almighty that it's on this day that we have gotten to see the fully published copy that we've been showing you and, and referencing on this particular day because it's on this particular day that we ourselves get to see some of our labor of love in the manifestation. And um, we're really excited um, and hopeful that all of you brothers and sisters who are willing and, and seek to will get a copy, but at this particular present time, we do not have the means of even giving it out for free. You understand? This is what we seek, you know, you know, just like other laborers of the gospel in whatever denomination they may be, but if they truly sincere, for example, there's the recovery version Bible that we've been mentioning. You can order a copy and get a copy of this free. We're not at that particular stage of ministry, but we are praying and we are hopeful that we can get to that particular stage. We can provide much of these materials for free because that's what it's about. You understand? There's, we're seeking I and I blessing. You understand? We're seeking the blessing of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the land of the living, in this life and in the life to come. So we're speaking on Revelation and we're speaking on the resurrection. We've been speaking on this particular point of resurrection that we as the Rastafari, we are the, the living witnesses of the resurrection and immortality of his majesty. So when the heathen and the sheathen asks us, like, where's your God? Where's your Father? Where's your King of Kings? When you see I and I, you see the Father. So we must be fully persuaded of that truth, and we can only come to that point by study, by faith, by prayer, by love, and by good conduct, according to the testimony of Jesus Christos, we must not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So this is a heart and a mind campaign, my brothers and sisters. Now, on the point of resurrection, there's a, let's see if we can bring up this scripture there's a particular verse, because one speak about the death of his majesty, and his majesty is dead, and um, that bothers certain Rastafari that might be spiritually immature. What did I just say? That if the thought of the heathen and sheathen and, and, and the lost people in the world and deceived and deluded worldly secular people believing that his majesty is dead, if that discourages you as a Rastafari, then you are somewhat immature in the, the word. You, you are, you're not mature. You could have been tried in Rastafari for, for the, the past hundred years. But if you do not know this truth, it's most likely because you do not know his majesty's testimony and perhaps have not been obedient to fulfill the will of our namesake. And that is to study and show yourself approved and to conduct I and I ourselves according to the teaching and the testimony. Now, what we wanted to touch on was this particular word came to I and I heart and mind, and this word is from 1 Corinthians 15 and 36. If we turn our Bibles to 15 and 36, we find that, and this is a, this is a whole chapter here, on the coming of Adonai and the first resurrection. So the coming of the Lord, the coming of Christ, to say the coming of Christ in his kingly character, and there would be a first resurrection. Now, this particular chapter is a very important chapter. Now, we have both the recovery, um, the recovery version, um, the New Testament, and we have the Schofield 
uh, reference Bible. As you should already know, there's freeware and, and shareware at our website, www.lojsociety.org forward slash study. But now, here at verse 36, now, this speaks about the method of resurrection, this section of scripture beginning from the paragraphical around verse 35. It says, but some man will say, how are the dead raised up? There are some who would say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? What, what sort of a body do they come? Are the dead raised up and they're like ghosts or something like that? Are the dead raised up in some false idea of reincarnation? And if you're a man, you'd be raised up as a dog or as a horse or as a rat or a cat or a dog or something like that. And then these, these ideas. So now, Huari Apalos, he says, thou fool. He says, thou fool. That which thou sowest, what you sowest. And, and in case you don't know, and I think all should, but some might not. And there's, there's no shame if one does not know these things, for one that hasn't been taught these things. If one does not seek them out and study to show themselves approved, then there would be a shame then. But that is, that is still a time off. So we have an opportunity now to study and show ourselves approved to God as workmen that need not to be ashamed. Sowing is an agricultural terminology, an agricultural terminology. Now, we have to remember that the biblical society and God's true society, even for us as Rastafari, is agrarian, agrarian, even though most of us may have little to no knowledge about that, being born or growing up in, in the Babylonian cities and in these, the, these black ghettos and in concrete jungle and concrete slave ships and projects. We may not know about what sowing is. But we do have that within our ancestry. In fact, when we were brought over here, our ancestors were brought over here. That's what they were doing. They were sowing and they were reaping, not for themselves, but for the so-called slave master, but for those who took John's people into captivity to fulfill Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to 68. Pay careful attention to Deuteronomy 28, 68, because that summarizes the whole trans-Ethiopic Ocean, so-called transatlantic slave trade, our Ethiopian Hebrew holocaust. So that witness there, you can look to the east, you can look to the west, north, and the south. The only people you will find that fulfill that are so-called Afro-American Africans in the Western Hemisphere and the Caribbean and South and Central America, only the so-called of that. You know, only the African slaves fulfill that aspect, that aspect of Scripture. Now, it says, that which thou sowest. So when you take a seed and you put the seed in the ground to sow that seed, to plant that seed, so that seed will grow and bear forth fruit. That is part of the process of sowing. It says, that which thou sowest is not quickened. Quickened means that it, it does not gain life. It's not, it doesn't gain life. So the seed that you have, it bears life in it. But it's not quickened. It's, it's, it, doesn't, it doesn't start to open up and, and, and bring forth its life until what? Except it die. So the seed does not bring forth life until it dies. So they tell us that his imperial majesty died. And we tell them, tell them that he rise. He rise. Because in Revelation, let's just go to Revelation for a moment. This is a a very favorite area of scripture in connection with the so-called um, death of Haile Selassie, examining this. We need to examine it from a, a Christ man, a biblical perspective. And when I saw him, Revelation chapter 1 verse 17 says, I fell at his feet as dead. So when Johannes saw him, he fell at, at this one's feet 
as dead, and he laid his right hand upon me, saying to me, Fear not, I am the first and the last. Edamawi Haile Selassie. Haile Selassie the first is the last king of kings of Ethiopia upon the throne of great King David, representing the renewed kingdom of David and the Davidic monarchy established in Ethiopia, fulfilling Psalm 6831. Princes shall come out of Egypt. Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands to Ha Elohim, to the true God. So fear not. We're not to be afraid. I am the first, Halasalasi, the first and the last, the last of a long line of biblical Ethiopic and Hebrew kings upon the throne of David, a 3,000-year-old lineage and monarchy. That's reality, my brothers and sisters. Regardless of what the naysayers want to say, they cannot dismiss the truth because we got the evidence, the proof. There's the proof of that. The proof is out there. Go look it up. The proof and the truth is out there. I am he that liveth. This is what the word says in verse 18. I am he that liveth and was dead. So the one that they said was dead, Christ in his kingly character, lives. Abba Kedus, Kedus, Abba Tachin lives. Yahai, Ja live, children, yea. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell, or the Sheol, the Duat, and of death. Now, that's a response that, that we had to pray and meditate and the Holy Spirit had to mingle with our spirit for us to really, really understand and comprehend and receive that truth. So now when we hear these things, these lies and rumors, I and I laugh at them. You understand? I laugh at them, especially those who do it out of hatred and ill will. But those who are deceived or misled, we teach if they're willing and teachable and willing to learn. Because it's all about the proclamation or the preaching, the preaching of the good news of his imperial majesty. That's the real task for a Rastafari, for Rastafari. Not to force anybody, but those who are willing. You understand? But it's our role and responsibility to proclaim the truth, especially in days like these, my brothers and sisters. There's signs and more signs that reveal exactly what time we're in. It's just like the days of Noah. Of Noah. And it says, And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but be a grain. It may chance of wheat or of some other grain. It might be wheat or some other grain, but God, Ha Elohim, giveth it a body as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh. Now this is this is a key thing right here. This is a key thing. You remember in the Gospels it says that those who don't recognize that Christ came in the flesh. Now, when you follow that idea of flesh, even when Paul says it, he says, my, my countrymen who are of my flesh. He says, like, my, in other words, those who are of the same ethnicity as black Hebrews, or we can say black. So when it says that those who don't recognize that Christ came in the flesh, it's not just speaking generically of flesh, because everyone knew that Yeshua HaMoshiach is a real person in that day and time, first century. That was, that was, that was why nobody disputed that. You see what I'm saying? Some people later on may have speculated about, about certain things, but the truth was already out there. But what it was speaking of was of the ethnicity, our black lord, and Savior. This is what, this is the key, this is the half of the story. Some think it's racist for us to say this, but they don't understand that racism only is white supremacy. White supremacy only is racism. And, the, and there's proof of that. There's proof of that. Now, is people, do people discriminate? Well, in a certain sense, as long as it's not harmful to anyone, you discriminate about what you eat. Somebody can't just put a plate of food in front of you. If you see something, if you see a piece of hair there, you understand? You, 
you're not going to just keep eating the food. You're going to discriminate. You might not eat the food no more. You might take out the hair and keep eating the food. True? So you discriminate. Now, do we discriminate against a particular race? We, don't have, we, are, we are powerless, my people. This is why we say that racism, in its true definition, is only white supremacy. White supremacy is the same old-time racism that not only it began with us, but it ends with everybody else. This is why we see other people going through the same slavery is still here. Trafficking is still here. It's still happening, my brothers and sisters. That means that half of the story hasn't been told, and half of the work still remains to be done. But the word goes on to say that all flesh is not the same flesh, but there's one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, and another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. Now, there's a great teaching in this, and hopefully you'll learn it, and if we have an opportunity, we'll be one to share what we know of this. But it says, so also is the resurrection of the dead, which is the fifth of the mysteries of the true Ethiopic church, the Amishtere Tinsha'e Mutan. It is sown in corruption. It is sown in what? It is sown in corruption. It is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. Do you understand the connection with the resurrection and immortality of his imperial majesty? That we are that living example that he lived, he lives in I and I. But that seed that he represents, that Kedamawi Haile Selassie represents, in that prophetic time was sown in dishonor, but it has been raised in glory. Abba Kedus, Kedus, Kedus. It is sown in weakness, but it is raised in Haile. It's raised in power. It is sown a natural body. Remember what his majesty says, I am a mortal Man, I am mortal. I'm a man. I am mortal. That's the natural. He bore witness to the natural body. It is raised a spiritual body. Abba Kedus represents that spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How be it? That was not first, which is spiritual. Do you understand? So when his majesty said, I'm a man, I am mortal, that was just half of the story. You understand? That was a true testimony. You see, his majesty was not deluded about the true spirituality or his true role and responsibility in revelation and manifestation. So now as we understand this, we can recognize what he meant by what he said. How be it, that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, that which is mortal, precedes that which is immortal. One cannot go from the mortal to the immortal except by the experience of what is known as death. Right? And afterward, that which is spiritual, the first man is of the earth, earthly. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Adonai, is the Adoni, is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. So those who are earthly or worldly, we can by extension extend it. Those who are worldly or earthly, they perceive Haile Selassie, our father, from those earthly spectacles. So therefore they view him as either a hard man, a, a tyrant, or an oppressor, or a bad or evil man, right? But the second man is the Adonai, is the Lord from heaven, is the heavenly one. You see everybody talking about these heavenly signs like Nibiru, you understand, and, and Elanim. But there's a connection with our Lord who is from heaven. Remember Yeshua, he resurrected and went up into heaven. And we get a testimony of Abba Kedus likewise. 
as is the earthly, such are they that are, are that are earthly, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, or the say the mortal, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood this is the key. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God because the kingdom of God is in spirit and in truth. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. So what does Hawadi Apollo say next? We're at the 51st verse of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. He says, Behold, look and see. I shew to say I'm showing you a mystir. I'm showing you a mystery. And what is this? He says, we shall not all sleep. Say that we shall not all die. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed. So different brothers and sisters in the generations leading up to our present generation, many have gone to sleep. Many have died. You understand? They have slept. But we all, whether they are sleeping,